will now go to launch the preliminary results of our national anti-doping governance observer. But before doing so, allow me to say a few words about the background. In the past seven years, Play the Game and its academic and sports partners have developed two tools to benchmark sporting organizations. We call them the Sports Governance Observer and the National Sports Governance Observer. This exercise was quite successful and has strengthened the debate on sports governance worldwide. So it was natural to imagine a similar project covering national anti-doping agencies, even if they are more diverse than the sports organizations in their structure. When benchmarking, we first set out to define the highest ideals in the various aspects of governance, be it transparency, accountability, democracy, etc. Then we developed a tool to measure the agencies. And finally, we have analyzed the data we found. When you see the results, we kindly ask you to remember that we do not measure the practice of these agencies and we do not deem them capable or incapable. What we do measure is the rules, regulations and procedures, the structure, because we believe that all things considered, that good rules, regulations and procedures will lead to better practice than bad rules, regulations and procedures. As Andrea mentioned a few weeks ago at a critical phase of our project, our scientific coordinator Arnold Gerard from KU Leuven and Utrecht University unfortunately had to go on sick leave. We wish him well and we are confident to continue our cooperation with him in a few months. Luckily, we have no shortage of excellent researchers in our group and moreover, they were ready to do an extra effort on a very short notice. The team has been led in the past weeks by Professor Dr. Jürgen Mittag from German Sport University, German Sport University Cologne, uh, with whom we have also been working closely over almost 10 years, and he has been instrumental in developing the sports governance observer tools and also this anti-doping governance observer tool. Um, he has been uh, supported by master student Lorenz Fiege, uh, also German Sport University Cologne, by uh, Pavel Sembura from Warsaw University, by Louis Haas from University of Lisbon, by uh, Christina Fries Johansen and Daniel Heyman uh, from Play the Game. You will meet them all um, except Daniel Heyman, who we cut out of the program for time reasons, but you will uh, meet them all uh, in the next hour. And uh, by thanking them once again from their, for their extraordinary efforts in recent weeks, I'd like to pass the floor to Jürgen Mita. Thank you. So, a warm welcome from my side. And may I ask if you see properly the starting slide? It looks good. Thank you very much. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, together with my colleagues uh, that already have been introduced, I'm going to start um, the presentation on the background of the project, on some major tasks that have been taken in the last months and also some preliminary results we are going to share with you today. The project has started two years ago and since then we have tried to develop a multidisciplinary, a multi-stakeholder and also a cross-country project which you clearly can take from the participants and institutions that have been involved. The background of the project is quite apparent. Um, it's the ongoing debate on good governance in 
anti-doping organizations. We want to foster and inspire national anti-doping organizations to improve and to better the standards of good governance. But we also want to ensure that we have a general approach to data at all. This is one of our first targets. We are aiming at mapping the current structures, structures of governance in the field of anti-doping organizations. Secondly, it was our primary goal to develop a tool, a tool based on previous experiences, but which is adapted and focused on anti-doping organizations and agency. And thirdly, we want to analyze the data we have collected on these organizations and to carefully draw some kind of conclusions and recommendations. The points of departure have been heavily inspired by the doping scandal in Russia, but also by the ongoing debate on the need of improving government, of ensuring legitimacy and integrity. The debate on good governance is not a very recent one. It has started at the latest in sport at the turn of the century. But good, governments, good governance is still contested, even though we have in the academic world an ongoing number and an increasing number of academic studies on good governance, there's not necessarily cohesion and coherence established in the field. As a common understanding, we can nevertheless argue that a majority of these studies defines good governance as a responsibility of sports organization for the functioning and the integrity of sports through the development, implementation and control of norms and rule of the sport governing bodies. Against this backdrop, we, are, we have started our project being aware about the problems in anti-doping agencies about the variety in the existing national setups but also the cultural differences which have to be taken into consideration we have put special light on the athletes involvement and we have also been faced with the ongoing power struggles in vada especially view of governance reforms but also with the role of inado that filed a clear statement for global anti-doping reform. Against these backgrounds, you see our overall project approach in a nutshell over here. The focal point are the NADOs, but they are linked to various categories and aspects. They are linked to the targets of legitimacy, effectiveness and integrity. They are inspired and sometimes also with a lot of pressure pushed by governments, by media, by the WADA, by athletes, by the public, by other sports organizations, and by sponsors and consumers as well. Corruption, mismanagement, and scandals have heavily contributed to the overall project, but are not necessarily the only focal points. What we tried to develop in the first stage of our project were dimensions of good governance. You all are aware of the topic and you all are aware that transparency, democracy, control are major categories which are usually addressed in all studies on good governance. In this project, we tried to be more precise and we tried to put special attention to some aspects of transparency. That is the reason why we distinguished between operational transparency in a more general perspective on the organization and into anti-doping transparency in view of the activities in view of the transparency that has been established in view of the anti-doping dimension. In addition to the already mentioned dimension, we have introduced operational independence as a key element of anti-doping governance activities. For instance, the question of separate funding, but also the authority to draft one's own budget are considered as major categories. And last but not least, we also put some light on anti-doping responsibility, as there are aspects like education or prevention, but also the role of whistleblowers protection. These were categories which were considered as quite important. Throughout the last two years, we first have started with some kind of desktop research 
exploring and investigating the website and the home pages of the National Anti-Doping Agency in view of available documents, in view of statutes, reports and other material. In the second stage, we have asked for further documents upon request if there are specific agendas, protocols, plans or policy papers and as well internal documents which were originally not available on the website but submitted on request. And in the third stage of data collecting, we have getting closer contact with the people working inside these organizations, the board, the staff, but we have also addressed other stakeholders in the world of sport and the world of anti-doping activities, and we have been in contact with additional experts in the academic field. Bringing these various dimensions together, and that was a major part of the project, we have developed our anti-doping observer, which is consistent of six dimensions, the so six dimension we just introduced. And in addition to this, for each dimension, a number of seven to 10 principles. And in order to differentiate this even more detailed, a number of 170, 73 indicators as a whole. This sounds a lot, but uh, we consider this as necessary in order to refer to the differentiation that has been taken and occurred in the world of anti-doping activities in the last two decades in particular. In order to reduce complexity, first of all, we increase complexity, but we also try to keep complexity on a specific level. We have finally decided, and that is similar to the previous observer we have developed, to a simple dichotomy between yes and no, and in some cases, a non-applicable uh, category in addition to this. This, of course, reveals some kind of limitations in view of ever increasing complexity, but it was necessary also in view of using the data, applying to the data, and especially comparing the data. How looks this tool in detail? And in the handout, you will find some more details on this. First of all, we have a dimension. In this case, it's the dimension operational transparency. This dimension is linked to a principle. For instance, over here, um, the publication of statutes, constitutions, and other documents. And thirdly, we have an indicator. In this case, we have three indicators to measure the principle. And you see the details that are linked to each dimension and each principle. That is the background. And now you're probably interested in some of our results. And we are going to introduce these results uh, with a hesitant perspective anyway, um, though we are going to present you our overall NATCO index score with green, yellow, and red signs, we are cautiously um, drawing attention to the specificities. Specificities in view of the national background, in view to the national culture, but in view also to, to the variety between the various dimensions and principles. And that is the reason why my research colleagues will introduce in a minute both the country perspective as well as the various dimensions in order to make quite clear that we couldn't come, shouldn't come to easy conclusions and easy results, but that we have to have a further look and a second glance as the data and as the material. What you see on the overall score over here are again the six dimension and in how far these six dimension have been applied to, whether they are in a very good overall score perspective or in a moderate or in a non-fulfilled perspective. And at first glance, of course, you see some obvious differentiations between some parts of Europe, between Western Europe and Eastern or Southern Europe, but also between the Western countries or the OECD countries and the non-OECD world, and this offers already some kind of explanation. Now I'd like 
to pass the floor to my colleague Lorenz Fiege, who eagerly worked throughout the last weeks on the data and on the overall index score, which you see on the next slide according to the 11 countries under investigation. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Professor Mittag, uh, for introductory part uh, of our NATCO tool. And also a warm welcome uh, from my side uh, to the audience and our research partners. So let's start um, with an overview of the overall NATCO scores uh, of all the surveyed NADOs uh, on this slide. And as shown here, the average NATCO index score of all the participating NADOs amounts to 52%. And as Professor Mittag already explained, we can see a large variance of NADO's overall scores, reaching from 12 to 78 percent. And among the eight European NADOs, we, for example, have a difference of 48 percent between Denmark and Germany, leading the tableau with 70 percent, and Slovakia on the other side with 30 percent. As shown uh, by Mitt Professor Mittag in the previous slide, we can furthermore observe differences between Western and Northern European countries on the one hand and Eastern, respectively, non-European NATOs on the other hand. And as displayed here, Western European NATOs have a significantly higher overall score than Eastern European and non-European NATOs. Except for India, non-European NATOs show a performance that is at similar levels to that of Eastern European NATOs. India's low score can indeed be explained by a limited communication and exchange with the organization's chairperson, who did not provide us with detailed feedback on the indicators which were not answerable by the use of publicly available data. Proceeding with the next slide, we can see an overview of the scores of the surveyed NADOs on the six NATCO dimensions each. And with different NATCO dimensions overall, relatively large differences across NADOS dimension scores are clearly visible here, especially within the dimensions of operational transparency, democratic processes, and internal accountability and control, NADOS X scores vary largely. Whereas within the other three dimensions, nine out of 11 NADOS achieve at least a moderate score each, indicating the, existing, uh, the existence of minimum standards um, that are upheld here by the majority of NADOs um, across the dimensions of anti-doping responsibility, operational independence, and anti-doping transparency. On the figure on the next slide, we can then see an aggregated um, average dimension index score um, of all the participating NADOs. And it, as illustrated here, anti-doping responsibility achieves the highest score with 65 then. On the other side, the dimension of democratic processes constitutes the lowest average score with only 42%. Though clear differences within and across the dimension can be observed here, summed up, there is less variance on the level of the average NATCO dimension scores than on the level of the overall NATCO scores of all the surveyed NATCO as displayed previously on the slides before. The displayed figures and also the dashboard that has, has been briefly explained by Professor Mittag are also included in a handout that will be provided uh, to you after the presentation. And now we would like to proceed with the presentation of the key results of four of our participating countries and their not starting with Denmark and Christina Fries Johansson. Thank you. Thank you, Lawrence, and hello, everybody, everybody out there. It's good to be with you today although I can't see you. Um, so I'm here to present the results of the NEPGO study in Denmark. And some of you may know that I used to work for many years uh, inside the, the Danish NATO anti-doping Denmark, but uh, it's been really interesting to have the opportunity in this project to, to take a look at uh, the organization from the outside, so to speak. And uh, so you see on the slide, uh, uh, this is how we decided to, to present the, the, the various national results with these uh, donut graphs uh, showing the, first of all, the, the NETGO index, the overall index, and then the various dimensions with each, in, a, in each uh, separate donut. And um, as you see, there is a lot of green in Denmark, which is good. And uh, of course, this also shows that, that 
on the overall in general um, uh, net go indicators in Denmark have been implemented to a very high degree. It's very very strong results for four out of the six um, dimensions, as you see, um, with results ranging between 85 to 87 um, percent for for four out of the the six um, dimensions. We have a little list screen within the dimension democratic processes with the results of 70%, and then um, one, one yellow um, in the dimension international accountability and control with results of uh, 56%. But overall, again, the, the NETGO index in general is 78%, which is a really um, high score, I would say, um, compared to, to the general findings in the project. I think it's fair to mention just briefly in the beginning that um, anti-doping Denmark have been very cooperative during the process and um, over the project period, as you heard, it's been it's been almost two years now, um, they have made a lot of changes to their procedures, both their statutes and, and internal operational documents and, and the, the annual report has been um, broadened to include more data than before and this has affected the, the data so uh, these results are just recently amended a little bit because the annual report was just published for um, the year 2020 and that included um, a lot of uh, indicators um, in the network project and and of course that is very positive to see how this project has um, uh, resulted in in some good changes in Denmark, uh, moving to a, a darker color of of green. Um, next slide, please, Jürgen. Jürgen, do you hear me? Please, please turn to the next slide. It doesn't look like that is possible sorry i can't move forward you can't i need i need the signal again please okay thank you okay anyway just to give you a little bit of background information for um add as we like to call it um it was established as a public self-governing institution in 2004 um by a law which means that um, a lot of uh, the governance of ADD is actually defined in, in law and uh, that helps a lot um, with regards to, to governance because a lot of, uh, a lot of requirements for the NACO project have ac actually uh, followed from, from the law that is um, applicable to ADD in, in Denmark, both the, the law on, on anti-doping or integrity in sport as it is now, but there are also some, uh, some governance requirements um, obliging ADD as a public institution to follow certain government's uh, standards um, because it is a public institution and um, receiving um, grants from, um, from the Ministry of, of Culture in Denmark. Um, um, in, in terms of the project here, it's probably worth mentioning that um, ADD is considered as a medium-sized NATO. Um, so that means that um, the indicators in the NACO tool um, in the categories basic and intermediate apply to, to ADD. The, the advanced indicators uh, do not apply as, as uh, ADD is, is defined as a medium-sized NATO. And you can turn to the next slide. But the key results, like, let's look at those. Um, you see another way, the spider web to present the results. And in general, again, performance is very high within uh, most of the indicators. And as I said, um, ADD is it's an advantage actually to, to be um, obliged by law to follow certain, um, certain requirements with regards to governance. Um, it has exclusive authority over its budget and can draw up the budget um, by itself. Although there is a framework agreement in place with the, with the Ministry of Culture running over um, a four-year period where ADD reports to the Ministry of Culture on, on the activities within the certain areas of their operation. Um, but apart from, from what is established by law and executive um, orders, 
there are also very solid procedures in, in place um, for ADD internally and um, and for the for the operation of the the internal um, activities. There's a high degree of response, anti-doping responsibility, as we call it in this project. Um, ADD is required by law to, to also focus on a more recreational target group, and that uh, that benefits in, in, in terms of the NATGO project, where a lot of indicators in this area are fulfilled um, as a result of that. Um, we see very strong cooperation, both uh, nationally, but also uh, internationally. Nationally, nationally, ADD has very strong networks with uh, other um, authorities and um, internationally with, um, with NATO and, and, and IFs. Um, yeah, you could turn to the next one, please, Jürgen. So, but, there's always a but, isn't there? And um, we did, we did in the Danish uh, study find um, these less fulfilled indicators where internal accountability and control is one of them. And um, were some of the, the procedures that would strengthen governance in, in this area would be to look at, uh, at um, policies for premature resignation of board members that is not in place at the moment. So when, when a board member has to, uh, to leave because of a conflict of interest, unethical conduct or, or something else, then, then there's actually no, um, no procedure to follow in that respect. But that could be, that, that could be one of the areas where, where ADD could look to, to, to improve governance. Um, and then also um, by the implementation of a code of conduct for, for board members, there are some policies in place at the moment. But, uh, but it could be strengthened by, by a, an individual code of conduct for, that apply to, to board members. Um, and then within the dimension democratic processes, um, the reason why ADD doesn't score higher within this dimension is that involvement of athletes and athlete support personnel is only seen to, um, to a little degree. Um, and this is another area where, where in the future, um, governance could be strengthened, at least in order to improve scores in, in this project. And then uh, finally, um, ADD has a, a scoring of, of 50%, um, whereas the, the NETGO indicator requires 75%. And that's, that's, the, that's another way to, to improve governance in, in, that, um, in that dimension. Thank you. That was it for Denmark. Thank you very much, Christina. Uh, I will speak about uh, Polada, um, the Polish anti-doping agency that was uh, also a partner in the project from the very beginning. And it received an uh, average score of 44% in the NADO project. Uh, however, the scores uh, varied uh, tremendously between the dimensions and uh, good scores were um, received uh, in the area of uh, anti-doping responsibility and uh, democratic processes and lower uh, in reference to operational transparency and uh, operational uh, independence. Can I ask for a next slide? Uh, just to briefly speak about the background of uh, Polada, it's quite in important that uh, in Poland uh, the sports system was, is considered bureaucratic, meaning that uh, the state is an uh, active regulator of the sector. And there isn't uh, much negotiations uh, in the policy making process, and uh, the system also lacks uh, general inclusiveness of the uh, different stakeholders uh, in the policy process. Uh, we have also a specific law uh, on sport and uh, anti doping. Uh, Polata is a relatively new organization established in uh, 2017. And uh, what is uh, particularly uh, important in reference to uh, Polada and uh, NADO scores is that uh, the organization, uh, in comparison uh, to uh, some other Western uh, European 
countries or NATOs, uh, we also analyzed, uh, like Slovakia or Bulgaria, has a board. Uh, however, this uh, board has only an uh, advisory role, meaning that it only gives opinion on uh, reports on budget or on um, annual and multi-annual uh, plans. The uh, Pol Polada is also considered a medium-sized NATO uh, for the purpose of the project, but it's uh, much smaller than uh, Danish uh, NATO. And uh, why did it used to uh, focus on uh, elite sports in uh, the most recent uh, years, we have seen a switch to um, interest towards more uh, general population. Uh, the fact of having a board, but uh, only with a li limited set of function, uh, highly affected the uh, scores in the uh, NATO uh, project. Um, for example, uh, the role of the board was uh, slightly uh, undermined uh, due to this uh, limited set of functions, and uh, this affected the uh, uh, transparency in operational transparency index. Uh, there were some other uh, factor which have, uh, factors which were uh, associated with board uh, and affected other area, dimensions of uh, NADO index. Uh, for example, um, not uh, uh, lacking separation of uh, power or uh, not being able to uh, draft on budget or uh, uh, having uh, only uh, annual uh, uh, funding. So, uh, may I ask for the next slide? So, those were uh, factors somehow uh, external to uh, Polada, which uh, hindered the, the scores in uh, some of the dimensions uh, where Polada scored lower. On the other hand, the uh, organization received uh, much better scores uh, in the dimensions which were independent. I would say more dependent on the Polada itself, such as uh, anti doping responsibility and uh, democratic processes. And uh, uh, throughout those two years of the NADO project, we have seen some um, real improvements in those uh, areas in Polada. For example, uh, uh, establishing uh, policies uh, on uh, um, sorry, um, developing or establishing um, athletes committee in reference to democratic processes or uh, in increasing uh, cooperation with uh, non-European countries which were uh, establishing their own NADOs, so Polada supported them. Uh, so, um, or uh, or uh, more recently establishing uh, whistleblower protection policies. Uh, so uh, what we have seen there is still some room uh, for improvement in reference to those uh, dimensions like uh, uh, democratic processes or uh, anti-doping responsibility. For example, by measuring uh, impact uh, of the organization in those uh, areas like education or research or uh, making the procedures regarding uh, mm, athletes uh, who are members of the committee more democratic so uh, increasing uh, even increasing uh, the cooperation with uh, national bodies which are, uh, represent athletes uh, but uh, some I would say a greater uh, discussion, discussion should probably take uh, take place uh, in reference to anti-doping uh, system in Poland in general if uh, some of the other dimensions would uh, be to uh, would uh, like to be improved. Thank you very much. If it gets to Germany, um, I would need the signal. I'm so sorry, can't switch so you, forward. You are back with the camera.
could I have sharing the screen again and could I switch forward? And at the moment I couldn't switch forward on the slides. Okay, now it seems to work. Um, hopefully you see the overall German score um, on the next slide. Um, German score with a remarkable percentage of 78%, but with a larger variety between a very high score in anti-doping responsibility, showing a high level of awareness in this field as well, and uh, a moderate score in the field operational independence, showing also um, the overall structures and frameworks in which national anti-doping agencies are involved. As far as the German background is considered, we have to take into consideration the considerable complexity of the German sport um, systems with a larger number of actors, but also with a decentralized or federalized uh, system and various level of coexistence. The emerge of anti-doping activities in Germany started especially in the 1990s due to media reports, but also in view of a reappraisal of GDR sport, particularly at that time. Further incentives came clearly from the foundation of RADAR, and that also fostered the uh, foundation of the German NADA as a civil law foundation in 2003. The German NADA has undergone severe changes in view of professionalized professionalization in the year 2007 and in 2011. So the current setup very much differs from the previous setup and a major effect similar to the situation in other countries came also from the German Anti-Doping Act that officially has been implemented in 2015 and which more recently is about some changes. As some kind of key results, we can identify um, the strong um, internal accountability and control mechanism that have been um, um, established, but also the relatively high level of organizational autonomy. Even if the German uh, NADAR has faced some challenges in view of the institutional funding, um, for, especially in view of the long-term financial funding, uh, due to most recent uh, changes, especially due to the financial support of the Federal Ministry of the Interior and the German Bundestag, um, uh, this kind of challenge um, has been uh, solved. As the question of stakeholder participation is involved, the NADA pursues a rather pragmatic approach very often and maybe not necessarily um, mirrored in our uh, score is, are the informal and ad hoc procedures, while at some stages also a formal involvement of athletes and other actors and stakeholders is ensured. In view of the perspectives of the NADA, Yes. Yes. Regarding the challenges uh, and recommendations um, within the dimension of um, transparency, uh, first of all, NADA may consider disclosing more information on specific points of con uh, points of discussion, uh, its internal debates and decision-making processes um, of its supervisory board and expert commission meetings, for example by publishing minutes and concrete agenda items, for instance. And this should be rather um, easy to establish in future. Whereas um, considering the multi-annual budget cycle, we encounter more um, discrepancies, so to say. Those is state administered annual budget cycle, which NADA is currently subject to, requires neither the creation nor publication of multi-annual policy and budget plans where applicable in view of potentially disproportionate public insight, NADA may indeed consider publishing more detailed information on its future policy priorities and plan activities that go beyond the key objectives, actions, and also strategic elements, which are currently also partly out, uh, outlined in its quite comprehensive annual um, report. In view of democratic processes, Overall, NADA should further intensify its multi-stakeholder dialogue and exchange, especially with athletes and athlete support personnel. However, it may anticipate establishing more formal and institutional forms of participation and representation, such as 
statutory provisions in the internal regulations and democratic elections of athlete representatives on its internal bodies. In order to complement its uh, worse ad hoc activities and uh, policy-specific policy um, cooperation with athletes, as for example, recently in, the, in relation to the development of the dried blood sport uh, sample collection procedure. And as anti-doping Denmark, it may also furthermore raise the quorum for the adoption of board decisions, 50 to 75%. Coming to internal accountability and control on the next slide. NADA may consider finding its code of conduct that currently has a rather limited degree of uh, regulation. And addressing the operational independence of NADA's supervisory board, we indeed encountered discrepancies between NADA's fundamental organizational logic on the one hand side, and on the other side, the conception of an independent board in the NADCO project. Contrary to the ineligibility rules in the NATCO tool, national politicians and sport governing body management members here from the sports committee of the German Bundestag and the German DOS are indeed represented on NADA's supervisory board by virtue of its foundation institution. Though the respective persons might be represented or for justified reasons, for example, to ensure well-balanced competition of the board with multiple levels of expertise, and the checks and balances between different stakeholder groups, NADA may further reflect on the composition of its board by considering also the implementation of rules for eligibility of politicians and management of SGBs, among others. And besides, it should definitely ensure that possible conflicts of interest, for example, among board members, are duly reported and that respective democratic control, control functions are up for the latter. Also, the establishment of key limits for board members and standing committee members could be considered. A third point of concern are data protection rules. Facing a current investigation of the responsible state commissioner for data protection and freedom of information, the sold NADA Just database that provides an overview of the concluded disciplinary proceedings in Germany, including the names and suspension assets who were found um, to have committed anti-doping rule violations, has been closed temporarily. And now we continue with the results of the first overseas country of Brazil. And um, I uh, hand over to our research partner, Luis Haas. Thank you, Lorenz. Uh, well, uh, I'm very happy to be here. I'm very happy to be, to receive the, this, uh, the invitation to investigate my country, Brazil. Actually, I'm living now in Lisbon. And I also had the opportunity to investigate the, the Portuguese uh, NADO. But while I'm here to present the, the, the Brazilian results, uh, the, the Brazilian uh, Anti-Doping uh, Authority, that the Portuguese acronym is ABCD. So I will use this acronym during my presentation. Uh, I think that uh, everybody can see the results in, in the screen. Uh, the NADGO index of uh, the, the ABCD was uh, 52%. And we can see uh, in the dimensions that uh, there are uh, balanced results with not so large varia variations. Uh, the best score is in the internal accountability and control dimension. And the weak score is a democratic process. Uh, with 37%, and I will show some highlights during uh, the, the presentation. So next slide, please. Well, just giving a, a briefly background about the, the Brazilian system, sports system. So uh, as, the, as many countries, it's a, a bureaucratic sports system, and the state has a, a active role in uh, regulation and also especially in funding. So there are many central questions that are uh, related to the, the government and the anti-doping uh, organization is a public organization uh, inside, is, is inside the, the structure of the special secretariat uh, for sports that is inserted in the, um, the Ministry of the Citizenship that uh, it's the ministry that uh, uh, works with uh, sports, culture, and social development. Uh, well, the, the ABCD 
was established in 2011. It has uh, 10 years uh, since uh, began uh, to, to work. Uh, the, the last legislation, specific legislation on anti-doping is from 2016 and was updated in 2018. And uh, the Brazilian anti-doping code is really new. The, the, the new version, it's uh, start to, to, to be applied this, this year in 2021. And another in, important information is the, it's a new um, advisory standing committee, a new body inside the, the ABCD that start to work in 2020, had the first meeting in 2020 and bring a more democratic and a more uh, controlled uh, environment to the uh, ABCD. ABCD is also a medium-sized NATO. It's no more than 30 uh, uh, full-time employees. So uh, we use this, this um, uh, structure to, to investigate. Next slide, please. Well, here are some key results. As I said, the best scores in internal accountability and control. And uh, as a public organization, uh, the, the ABCD is involved in a rigid public control system. Uh, for instance, the, there is uh, the control of audit agency that control uh, other uh, public organizations and have uh, strict control about uh, questions related to financing and, uh, and the, the, the operational uh, conditions. Um, there are also a good score in operational transparency, uh, especially due to a very uh, accessible website, a user-friendly website with uh, the place where I get uh, a lot of information from internal regulation, organiza organizational chart, uh, annual reports, some uh, um, minutes from uh, uh, meetings. So it's a really easy uh, website and I had a, a lot of information from operational transparency and also about anti-doping transparency, especially because uh, I also got uh, accessible information on testing activities and uh, some annual results. Uh, in the dimension operational transparency, uh, uh, excuse me, operational independence, uh, the hearing panel got a, a good score, uh, a well-organized hearing panel uh, with a good structure and well-functioning. Uh, and also in the anti-doping responsibility, the dimension anti-doping responsibility, I found a, a very uh, organized uh, educational plan. Uh, it's, it's an annual uh, educational plan, but uh, it's on the website and there are all the objectives uh, in this uh, plan. And I also find a very uh, interesting cooperation between the Brazilian uh, uh, anti-doping uh, authority and the Portuguese anti-doping authority. So all the athletes, when comes uh, travel to competitions, uh, international competitions around in Europe or other places, uh, when they stopped in Portugal, they have all the the support of the the Portuguese anti-doping uh, authority, and also when Portuguese. Uh, athletes travel to Brazil is the same condition. And uh, well, the weak score in the democratic process, uh, as I said, there is a good composition in the advis advisory standing committee, but there are some issues that uh, need to be taken uh, into account. Next slide, please, uh, Jürgen. So for instance, to improve in the democratic process, uh, it's important to increase the formal participation of athletes. Athletes are represented in the advisory uh, uh, standing committee, but they are not elected. They are appointed by the national commission. Uh, and also in the, including the athlete support personnel in this uh, advisory uh, committee. 
also to introduce some gender equality pol policies or formal policies about this important topic. And uh, another suggestion and recommendation is to increase the number of meetings of the uh, Brazilian authority to improve uh, the formal procedures. Another very uh, uh, quick, quick recommendations about operational transparency. Uh, we recommend to publicize the overview of declaration of conflict of interest. There are documents that, that exist now, but are not uh, published. Uh, we recommend also uh, to prepare a multi-annual policy plan. Uh, there, there, we, uh, I can't found a, I couldn't found a, a, this kind of document, a multi-annual policy plan, and also a long-term financial plan. And also, uh, the last uh, recommendation is regarding anti-doping responsibility, and we uh, really recommend to cooperate with research institution in anti-doping research to improve this uh, dimension and get better better scores. So this is my brief uh, presentation. Thank you so much again. And thank you very much, Pavel. And now we are going to conclude with some kind of cautious overall conclusions and results. After having shown you this colorful picture with very many tendencies and variations, uh, we don't want to turn our color into black and white, but at least trying to identify some overall trends. The next slide, which I unfortunately can't push forward. Can we switch to the next slide or can I get access again to switch forward? Okay, thank you. Now it works. Um, first of all, and you have taken this from the four presentations, uh, the four NADOs and the others and the investigations vary substantially in view of their overall appearance in size, in structure, in financing and the legal framework. Of course, the national political system matters, for instance, as there are approaches to Nordic transparency, which are also mirrored in the National Anti-Doping Agency. But well, we have also variety in view of the targets. If, for instance, Poland and Germany is focusing more on elite sports, we have other NADAs that focus clearly on leisure sport activities, on gymnastic or fitness, as well as, for instance, in the Danish case. We have to have in, we have to take into consideration uh, the bureaucratic structures in non-EU countries, especially when it gets to the non-EU NADAs. And we have also clearly uh, to conclude that each NADO pursues its own way. And therefore, we are quite careful in view of giving any kind of best practice examples or recommendations, but just cautious results and cautious recommendations. What we also have to take into consideration is the relatively short history of the NADOs. These organizations have been primarily established in the last two decades and they have already undergone some substantial changes and therefore they can be considered as learning institutions. Incentives came from the international level but as well from the national level and also particularly from the anti-doping legislation. Operational independence, conflicts of interest remain a key issue in the internal structures of NADO, as for instance the question of the composition of the oversight boards explain. Money matters is obviously also not a surprise. Um, the NADOs have faced an ongoing struggle for financial resources and funding has always been um, a matter or gateway even for um, increasing influence of public authorities. That is a tendency we can identify for nearly all NADOs that public authorities play a stronger role um, especially by means of financial support, but also by national legislation. Seeing that we have in very many countries anti-doping legislation or regs, we see also by this mean of public law an overall tendency of stronger involvement. 
On the other hand, cooperation plays also a crucial role and it's impressive how many different kinds of cooperation have been established, seeing INADO, seeing um, also the cooperation with the Council of Europe, with UNESCO and various other multi-stakeholders. Uh, um, there's an um, ongoing process of cooperation and interaction. External and internal capacities uh, differ, um, um, therefore we consider transparency, democracy and accountability still as a major challenges and uh, changes have already been uh, planned or established, for instance in the view of um, relying on the role of intelligence and uh, investigation. Informal cooperation is especially relevant when it gets to the cooperation with athletes. A limited amount of formal cooperation and interaction, but a ha rather high level of informal and up-to-date um, uh, voluntary activities in this field. Information and education as well as prevention play a crucial role, but there are some variations in view of the awareness of the societal value of anti-doping prevention activities and also some lack of um, education on anti-doping uh, governance among the athletes. These are overall conclusions we can carefully draw, but we also try to give some kind of overall recommendations. So I think I think you might continue on this slide, and uh, I will proceed on the okay. next one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. One of the overall recommendations um, is um, to do to continue with what we have started over here, um, a further reflection on internal structures and also on um, targets and um, national specificities. One aspect is: should there be common standards, common minimum standards on the one hand, or should there be a stronger adaptation to the national framework? To the national setting. Some tension, some cleavages are obvious between these kind of standard aspects on the one hand and the national specificities. Multi-stakeholder dialogue has already been established but could be ensured and deepened in the near future. One of the major challenges for the future, and there's no easy answer to this, is the question um, how to find an appropriate balance between effectiveness and legitimacy or transparency as well, ensuring Transparency on the one hand might decrease effectiveness on the other hand. And it's always a balance and this kind of discussion has to be uh, taken and has to be expressed also internally as externally uh, when it gets to the perspectives of the NADAs. From a very general perspective, we can say improving transparency can easily be achieved and might be if uh, the NADAs might develop a long-term perspective. The first step, a more short-term perspective, by for instance, for instance, offering access to a multi-annual budget or policy plan, or also in view of information um, about testing activities. Democracy and control standards are perceived from our perspective as medium targets that ensures or implies also some kind of structural changes, maybe changes in the um, internal status um, or some kind of institutional adaptations, so that might be a medium perspective. The long-term perspective, and that is the most crucial aspect, is of course to establish some kinds of a national anti-doping governance culture, a culture which is deeply anchored in the national system, and the national sport system, and which has also an effect on sport matters and anti-doping matters in particular. But this can't be ensured from one day to the next. This is a long-term perspective. This um, needs awareness. This needs support from very many stakeholders stakeholders and therefore we recommend to take this as a long-term perspective. So the All right, now, yeah. The NADO exactly, dimensions. Yeah. Continuing with some concluding remarks and uh, recommendations on the specific dimensions. Within operational and anti-doping transparency, as highlighted uh, before several times, overall NADO should provide more information on the meetings of its internal bodies. 
specifying, for example, the rational behind certain key decisions, at least. While deviations from the publication um, of a manual policy and budget plan can partly be justified, for example, with a view to the, to the national level peculiarities, as we have assessed for NADA Germany, for example, and second, with regards to specific uh, responsibilities as control bodies, they should further reflect on the tensions between operational transparency on the one hand and effective uh, strategic policy development on the other hand. Um, elaborating whether, how, and on which fields they may publish more detailed information on the future activities, ideally uh, in the scope of a multi-annual uh, policy and budget plan in accordance with the NATCO tool. Besides, information on the remuneration and compensation of board members and management staff should be further expanded by most NADOs which we have assessed. And our analysis has furthermore shown that reporting on possible conflicts of interests often falls short in many NADOs and should thus receive more uh, attention in the future. As for critic processes, um, and as our analysis has shown for most NADOs, uh, they should advance the institutionalization of stakeholder participation, as well as gender equity procedures um, in their human resources uh, policies. And uh, for most um, democratic decision making and election pr principles, such as quorums, majority voting, and especially term limits, should be upheld uh, by all NADOs. Coming to internal accountability and control, um, to prevent fraud and mitigation of funds, for example, NADOs should um, establish a regularly audited internal financial control system, including budgetary and cash management regulations, such as, for example, um, separation of duty uh, regarding payments um, and accounting. And as highlighted in the country results, a holistic and really practic practicable code of conduct um, should be uh, adopted by, by all NADOs. Proceeding with optional independence, uh, we can say here that the impartiality and democratic control of the oversight board members uh, should be a key point of concern aimed at fostering another's operational independence. And for this purpose, clear conflict uh, of interest procedures, also specific ineligibility rules um, for oversight board members um, constitute um, key elements. In terms of funding, Rules and mechanisms that provide NADA's management with the authority to draft its own budget without being subject to external uh, approval should be laid down. And it is also very important that the awarding of government funding um, uh, is conducted separately of other government funding lines and on a multi-annual basis. Um, really secure NADA's financial stability and also, um, also their adequate uh, operational uh, leeway. Given the poor, growing polarization of the field of uh, anti um, especially in the public, uh, monitoring of media coverage and social media, for example, via systematic fact sheets, um, also plays an increasing role for, for NADAS to sustain the interpretive authority on matters of anti -ding. And coming to the last dimension to anti-doping responsibility, we found here that cooperation with law enforcement bodies um, should further be uh, increased, not least because um, its effectiveness um, has recently been shown um, in the Operation Adalas across multiple countries. And then, uh, secondly, multi-stakeholder partnerships and doping research should further be intensified. And now, Professor Mitter, uh, I think, will conclude um, the presentation with some limitations and perspectives of the project. Thank you. Yeah, seeing uh, that we already exceeded our time, I'll very briefly conclude um, with the hint that we are aware of the perspectives of the project, especially in view of offering you um, um, a tool which can easily be adapted to further uh, NADOs and to further studies, but also being aware of the limitations, especially in view of the more methodologically narrow design of uh, the study and obviously that we can't be as complex as um, the up-to-date reality of the NADOs require. 
Anyway, we offer some kind of critical assessment beyond self-evaluation and hopefully also some kind of inspiration for further studies. And my final slide um, stops, uh, concludes with some kind of overall questions that might be also an incentive for the uh, rest of the day and um, the further discussions. I'm sorry, I can't switch forward to the final slide. Okay, here we go. So our final questions to the other discussant and to the participants for today are the question uh, whether there should be a minimum standard anyway uh, in view um, of National Anti-Doping Agency or um, should it be left um, to um, um, the individual organization. Secondly, what we already addressed, the balance or uh, the tension between efficiency and transparency, how to ensure appropriate level and balance. Certainly, the question um, um, of the focal point on elite sport and recreational or leisure sport, um, how to balance this kind of tension. Fourthly, is the question of athletes' involvement and participation in how far the current practices are um, relevant and um, already um, successful or whether there is any kind of improvement needed. And finally, um, the question whether some kind of a mainstreaming anti-doping governance is requested or required as a distinct sport policy field in addition to the activities that already have been done. I have to thank for your attention, especially in view of the research colleagues that John have contributed to these overall results. And we hope that these results offer you some kind of incentives for further discussion and for today and tomorrow's debate. Thank you very much. Good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good night to all of you. My name is Eva Buntov. I'm uh, the head of the communication department at NADA Germany, and I'm honored uh, to, yeah, to do the Q&A session, which is a little short right now as we are running a bit out of time. But we already received some questions, which I will read out loud. Um, just to let you know, before I start to read out the questions, I would like to let you know that we have a handout, which is uploaded on our website, but the final report will have all the information, which is in the writing process right now, and will be published soon when it's done. So uh, that as a side note. And another side note, and as you have seen in the slides, there were more countries in the project, um, which is Ireland, India, Kenya, Norway, Portugal and Bulgaria as well as Slovakia and we will have more time to discuss the outcomes of the um, of the study soon in the next session but I will read out the question that we received now and uh, start with Walter Palmer and the question um, goes to um, Jürgen Mittag um, if the key element in governance that an organization is effective achieving its legitimate purpose, how, to na how do NADOs measure if the activities are reducing or eliminating in international doping? Whatever the governance score, isn't this the key question and challenge? And I would like to ask Jürgen Mittag to answer the question. So could you repeat the last part? I was it was interrupted. I got the first yeah. part, but I didn't get the second half of it. I'm sorry. So I will I will read it out again. Uh, if the key element in governance that an organization is effective, achieving its legitimate purpose, how do NADOs measure if their activities are reducing or eliminating international doping? Whatever their governance score, isn't this the key question and challenge? I wouldn't consider this as the only key question, but of course it's, it's one of the uh, um, questions uh, which have to be taken into consideration. Um, what we take from our studies and our results and also from the talks we had with the respective organizations um, isn't uh, that um, a simple and easy um, 
one and only answer couldn't be given. Uh, I think um, that uh, has to be taken into consideration and we can't start from the same level and we can't assess it all from the same perspective. So I'm cautious again, and I think I highlighted this uh, several times um, to draw just upon the, the one and only element, but to recommend again, uh, to refer to the specificities of the national system, of the national background, of the starting point, how have things emerged, what kind of opportunities are available in view of cooperation, in view of access to international aspects, in view of testing tools, and so on and so forth. So be careful again in view of the international um, uh, of a simple international um, solution. I have two more questions for you. Um, the next one comes from Latvia, from Martins Diamonds. I'm sorry if I pronounce your name wrongly. Um, Interesting, is it possible to receive blank evaluation table for self-NADO analysis? I think you already will see in your handout the overall tool according to the um, dimensions, to the principles and the indicators. And once you have access to this, this uh, kind of tool can be easily adapted. Um, even if you have to be aware that not necessarily everything is self-evident and that some kind of um, further reflection is requested but i'm quite sure that the organizers of from play the game and also the experts in the team will give assistance and support in this perspective um i have a third question for you and then i have another question for Inado, so i will read out the last question for you which i have now and that's the question here um that's from grit hartmann freelance journalist mm, she's asking at the risk of re reducing an obviously complex analysis i'm interested in how the nada german or how the german nada got their high score in anti-doping transparency have the criteria for this been uh, weighted? And if so, how? The background for my question was briefly mentioned by you. After all, not even the names of sanctioned athletes are published anymore, let alone who is tested and how often. So to uh, elaborate, was the non-disclosure policy included in the 80% transparency core score or did you exclude it because you consider it, it as a temporary? Okay, yeah, that again shows um, the question of balances and how to deal um, um, with uh, various um, um, approaches um, of um, combining um, transparency and efficiency. Um, I can clearly uh, state that um, 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 improvement has been ensured uh, by a higher level um, um, of um, um, internal accountability and internal uh, transparency, which does not necessarily goes along with external um, transparency. Um, further details, um, I think, have are more complex than I can reveal in uh, 30 seconds or one minute time. So I'm open to further discussion or communication on this, and that might be also a chance for uh, the remaining uh, parts um, of our um, um, panel debate today. Thank you very much. I have the next question goes to Ainado and to Jorge Leiva. Um, what is Ainado's view on collective bargaining as a governance model for anti-doping? Um, and this question comes from Walter Palmer. Uh, thank you, Eva, and thank you, Walter, for the question. Um, I, I think that the, the, the NADO uh, project, uh, as uh, Jürgen Mittag uh, just explained, showed that uh, involvement, one of the conclusions of the project is that involvement of athletes and support personnel has improved, uh, but it can, uh, has increased, but it can be improved or can improve uh, uh, still. So, so, so I think uh, what is clear now is that we can uh, still work, uh, not only uh, among NATOs, but also uh, in the anti-doping um, community, as in, gen in general, um, that includes IFs, major and event organizers, and WADA to increase athlete representation. So I think before we can uh, we get into the weeds of which is the perfect model for athlete representation, um, 
would it be an union or an athlete committee? Um, uh, and if that's the way, uh, what is the way to uh, make the anti-doping system better for athletes? I think we just, the, the, the message now is to increase athlete representation within NATOs, but also uh, across all anti-doping organizations. Thank you very much, Jorge. And uh, I have another question to the research panel, um, which is from Adam Pengili. And he asks, thank you for this presentation. I'm a member of VADA Governance Review Working Group. One of the tasks we have adopted was to assess VADA's governance. This obviously requires an assessment tool or benchmark to measure against. However, finding an appropriate tool uh, to do this proved challenging. Do you um, have an, any plans to create a benchmarking tool um, that, and now I have to, would appropriate uh, for um, would would be appropriate for WADA? How appropriate would this not go be? And I think this goes to the uh, scientific research group. If I may. You may answer the question, yeah. please. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think uh, what we have presented today is already some kind of benchmarking, um, especially if you take uh, the average score and if you can uh, take the results from the various um, dimension. And I think this could be one approach also to break it down to various dimension and try to identify some kind of overall benchmarks uh, on a dimensional level and not on an overall level. Nevertheless, um, um, things have to be again seen from the starting point and from the backdrop and not uh, just uh, from the current status and also taking into consideration elements like the national background, that, like the national specificities. And that again leads us to be careful with uh, in view of overall um, blueprints uh, over overall best practice um, perspective. So we have to differ really between the benchmark tool and the best practice perspective. And here's the last question before we start with the break. Um, do you think the International Testing Agency can help the NADOs um, in mainstreaming anti-doping governance? And this comes from a student from the University of Lausanne. And I think that goes to Jürgen Mittag as well as question. Jürgen, can you still hear us and can you answer the question? I'm very sorry, but I have some problems with the connection. There is, uh, I usually get just half, 50% of the question. So uh, could you, sorry for this, exp uh, explain or read the question out again? No sorry. problem. I will read it out again and we can hear you. Do you think the International Testing Agency can help the NATOs in mainstreaming anti-doping governance? Yeah, I think any kind of um, additional activ activities might be beneficial and uh, should be um, included in already ongoing uh, activities. And uh, again, what I would highlight is the uh, high level or the increased cooperation throughout the last years, which are also considered by nearly all of our parties as a partners as a major benefit and as a major achievement in view of the quality um, of the previous years. Um, thank you very much. And these were all the questions we got. We now um, start with the break. I kindly ask you to not turn off the program and we will be back at uh, 3.40 with the next session. So we are running a bit late, but I hope you can understand that we wanted to ask all the questions that we got. Thank you very much and we see you in 10 minutes at 3.40 sharp.